Welcome back, everyone, to the Alaska Sea Life Center. Thanks for joining us today for a little craft time. So uh, today we're going to be making a clay wolf eel, and that was the animal that was on screen right there in the beginning. Uh, she is tucked away in her den, so you just see a little bit of her. But let me go ahead and show you what our clay wolf eel will look like when we're done. Uh, this is my sample here. And uh, they are floppy little creatures, very soft. And so parts of my wool field have become a little deformed, but that's actually what we're going for. We want to have that soft look to our little wool field. So as we go through the project today, we'll talk a little bit about wool field biology and uh, how much we enjoy them here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And uh, the supplies that we're going to need are Pretty basic. We've got, I've got some gray clay that's actually mixed gray and black, and then I've got some separate black clay uh, in a couple chunks. I've got a little stiff paper card that I can use as a cutting tool, a round toothpick that I'll use to smooth things out. I've got a little roll, uh, or a little tube of PVC to roll, and I have a cutting tool, which is a little stiffer. This is actually just a paint scraper, but uh, I could actually do all the cutting with my little stiff paper card if I needed to. Those are just the tools that I've selected. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to show you just a photo of a wool feel uh, in its adult coloration. So you can, can see that animal on screen. They're going to have a lot of, uh, they've got a gray body with a lot of black spots down the sides. And along the top, we've got this long dorsal fin that starts right behind the head and stretches all the way to the very, very tip of its tail. We have this kind of bulbous head, kind of rounded with two beady little eyes looking forward and a pretty toothy jaw. We'll talk about that a little later. If you look at the underside of the animal, just behind the head, there are these big pectoral fins, um, these big round fins that stick out to the sides. And then behind that, there's kind of a smooth part of the body with no fin on the bottom. That's where all of their internal organs are. So that's the abdomen of our wool field. We're going to have a little belly there uh, that fills up when they've just eaten a big meal. Gets a little rounder. And then just behind that starts the ventral fin, which just like the dorsal fin on top, stretches all the way back to the tip of its tail. So we've got this very elongated body uh, of the wool field. And uh, we're going to be creating that out of clay. So <clears throat> as we do that today, uh, you may think of eels as these long-bodied uh, fish. There are true eels, like moray eels, that will live in coral reefs down in the tropics. Um, those are a little bit different from our wolf eel. Uh, the wolf eel is not a true eel. It belongs to a different group of fishes uh, than the true eels. One of the big differences uh, are the pectoral fins on the side, so those ones that stick out right behind the head those big flared out pectoral fins, true eels don't have those. Another difference between wolf eels and the true eels like the mores is the way that they breathe. Uh, wolf eels have a percula. Those are the two little gill covers on the sides and they can breathe simply by flapping those and it pulls water through their mouth and across their gills and goes out behind the gill covers. Uh, on a true eel like a more, they just have tiny holes back there and they actually have to sort of gape and even almost gulp the water. They sit there with their mouths open, gaping, to be able to breathe. So it's a little bit different style, but really it's those big pectoral fins that are the most obvious difference between our wolf eel and our true eels like the mores. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to work on setting up my clay. So uh, for starters, I want to get the coloration of the clay. And I have, this was basically leftover gray and black clay to start with, just a lump of it. And then I've got some black. And what I want to do is get a little of the black just mixed in so you can kind of see there's a little bit of texture to my clay as far as the color goes. There's little streaks of gray and black in there. I want more of that. So I'm going to take my little hunk of black and just tear it into a few pieces and smash it into there. And I'm going to do a little bit on both sides. So now I've got some gray and black. And the way I want to mix it together is just by smashing it. I'm using Sculpey clay. This is uh, the baking clay, polymer clay. And so it'll stay soft until I bake it. 
Um, it, it doesn't really matter too much what type of clay you're using. We just want to get these colors mixed up well. But what I don't want is just a gray blob right now. I want to have some nice mixture of colors. So I'm going to take that uh, sort of rod-like shape of clay and twist it. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to smash it together. I'm going to twist it again. And this is what's creating that nice streaky look to my clay. I'm just going to keep doing that repeatedly. Now, if I just kept on going, eventually I would just have slightly darker gray clay, right? But what I want is that nice kind of mottled look. And so I'll just keep kind of twisting and folding until I get it to where I'm happy with the look of my clay and kind of smush it and stretch it out and see how it's looking. That's getting pretty good. I might do it one more time. Give it another little twist. Fold and stretch. And then I want it to be nice and smooth. So I've got it nice and warm now from just working it. And I'm going to smooth that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out into a pretty long ribbon. I want my ribbon to be uh, almost as flat as I can get it, uh, but not so extremely flat that I can't deal with it. So I'm going to flatten this out into a ribbon that's maybe 3 quarters of an inch wide. Parts of it are going to go off the screen here as I do this initially. And at the ends of my ribbon, I'm going to leave it a little bit thick. That's going to end up being my head of my wool feel. So what I'm doing is creating those spotted sides of my wool feel by doing this, stretching this out. And you'll see there's a little bit of a trick to it. But I'm going to make that long ribbon shape, kind of stretch it, press it into the paper here, and then I'll use my little roller to make that even a little bit flatter, end to end except for those two thickened ends that I'm going to use for my head. I can leave those just a little bit bigger. If my head ends up being way too huge, I'll just cut off the excess later on. But right now, I'm going to make my body nice and thin, and you'll see why in just a moment here. Get that rolled out. Okay. Now I'm going to peel that up off the paper and just fold it in half. Then I'm going to use my cutting tool to cut right there at the midpoint. And I've got two long ribbons. So uh, again, this thickened end over here on the right, that's going to end up being my head. What I have right now, though, is the left and right sides of my body. And the trick that I'm going to do now to create those black spots is I'm going to take my black clay and sort of run it throughout this. Then we're going to fold it up and cut a little bit off to create little spots. So what I need to do with my black is I'm going to set aside one of these layers, and then I'm going to work with just one for right now. I'm going to take small pieces of the black and roll them out into nice, long snakes, little ropes. And I'm going to run these through the body. Incidentally, this uh, whole process will be uh, left up on YouTube as a recording. So if you're watching it live and panicking because you're not keeping up with the steps that I'm creating, that's absolutely fine. The video will stay there. Uh, you'll be able to access it later. No worries. Uh, I know you're all just running through the kitchen looking for supplies right now, right? Or uh, trying to keep up with me. Uh, that's absolutely fine. You can take your time. You can pause the video, do whatever you need. Uh, and the beauty of clay is if you don't like it, you can make another one. All right, so I'm laying these ropes right on top of my one strip. Don't forget, I've still got the other one there just set aside. And I'm going to go a couple more. I'm going to kind of fill out the space here with these skinny little ropes. I'm going to make one a little bit smaller and put it in there uh, up here. Sorry for the bump there. My arm caught the document camera. Probably a little shaky on your end. There we go. All right, so what that is going to do is it's going to create the spots, but we're going to actually cut through those to create the spots on the side. Now, I've got a little extra black clay. I'm going to hold off. Sometimes less is more, right? So now I'm going to take the other flap of clay, and I'll lay it on top of that. 
give you one last moment to see what I've done. I've got these skinny ropes of black laid on top of my gray clay, these very thin ribbons of gray clay. And the front end here is going to be the head, so I've left that a little thicker with no black spots. And I'm going to lay those two back together, make a little clay sandwich, and just press them together. And here now we've got those little ropes of black running straight through the middle. I need those to become the sides of my clay, though. Let's take a break before we uh, reveal the trick here. Let's take a break and uh, look back at that first picture of the adult wolf eel and uh, recall that it's the one with the it's got a long gray body, black spots all over the sides. That's the one that we're making. They start off uh, their lives very differently. First of all, a female wolf eel can lay about 10,000 eggs. And uh, if you want to take a peek at our female wolf eel in her den, uh, you can see she is tucked neatly inside there. That is where they will spend really most of their lives. Uh, and a pair, a male and a female, will join each other in the same den. And it's thought that they mate for life, actually. They spend most of their time together inside that den. They are definitely not claustrophobic animals. Uh, they love to be inside there. And that elongated body helps them to find little cracks in the rocks where they can just tuck inside and be basically hidden from view. You'll typically only see the head of the wolf eel, like you see with ours right now. Uh, if you look really closely, you can see her tail is kind of wrapped around her chin right now. Uh, and that body, she is roughly four feet long inside there. It's a decent sized wolf eel, but they can grow up to be six to eight feet long uh, as a full grown adult. So uh, that female wolf eel might lay 10,000 eggs in her den. And uh, those little eggs, when they hatch, they are free swimming larvae uh, that just drift around out in the ocean with the plankton. Uh, until they uh, get a little bit bigger and then they'll settle down into those rocks. When they settle down into those rocks, they are not gray. Let's show you a picture of a little juvenile wolf eel. Uh, they're bright orange. So they make this amazing transition from a beautiful bright orange fish uh, to that more grayish color. And this happens at a fairly young stage of their lives, uh, maybe a few years old, maybe not even quite that old. Um, they uh, make that transition, and they're, they're still going to be fairly small uh, when they become that more grayish color. And actually, I've seen some that have almost like a blue and yellow stripe on their body as they're sort of transitioning from the bright orange juvenile to the grayish adult. So uh, again, we're making that grayish adult form. Let's get back to our clay now, and let's see how we can create that spotted look. Here's the trick to making that pattern in our clay. So I've got, again, the two layers of gray clay with those little ropes of black sandwiched between them. Now I'm gonna gently roll this. I don't wanna flatten it completely quite yet. I'm gonna gently roll that and I'm gonna start to stretch it out into a thinner ribbon. But I wanna kinda preserve the sort of roundish shape of those spots and you'll see it's not an exact science. It's kinda fun that every time we do this, it's a little bit different. As I roll that out, just getting it pressed a little bit flatter each time, I will continue to kind of stretch it, elongate that ribbon, and I'm stretching it into uh, a shape that'll be, oh, maybe a foot long or so even in the end. What I want to do ultimately is create a shape that I can fold back over onto itself, kind of like a piece of ribbon candy. And by folding it over and over and over again, I'm going to wrap those spots inside the body of my wool field. So I get that nice and stretched out. Again, about a foot long here. And now what I'm gonna do is starting at the tail, I'm just going to fold and crease, fold and crease, fold and crease, fold and crease. Let me hold it up so you can see. I'm just creating like a piece of ribbon candy. Again, all those folds. So all of those little black ropes are now getting folded up inside there, creating crisscrossing black rods through the middle of my wolf eel's body. And as I do that, I'm done with my little roller, let me get that out of my way. As I do that then, I need to smush that clay together to make a nice smooth appearance ultimately. So, and then here I've got the head end. 
I need to get that back smooth as well. So I'm going to kind of smooth out my head first just by squishing the clay, getting it nice and soft and mashing it in there. And what I want to do at this point is get everything pressed together nice and smoothly uh, without forgetting which side is which. I want to be able to hold my clay upright like this so I can see those folds because in the end we're going to slice off the sides. So I need to keep track of which is the sides, uh, which are the sides that I'm going to cut off and which are the top. But what I can do is just continue to press the clay uh, to flatten it together. Inside it's getting pressed together nice and smoothly. On the outer edges I can still see some of that folded texture, but on the inside my clay is going to get pretty tight. And same thing for my head. I want to make sure my head is nice and smooth. Of course I can ultimately smooth it out a little more if I need to. I'm making sort of a bullet train shape now with my ribbon candy appearance. And we're just about ready to reveal those spots. I can see things are getting pretty smooth inside there. I can even start to shape my head. This will be the, the lower side of my Wolfield's head. So they've got a little bit of a sloping forehead. And that just can help me kind of keep my eye on, on where I'm headed with my Wolfield. Give me a good, good angle to look at. And again, it's got that kind of bullet train appearance with that sloping forehead. All right, I think I'm ready. So I've got that folded ribbon candy look up here. What I'm gonna do now is take my cutting tool and just slice off, oh, about a quarter inch off of each side, I'm gonna say. I wanna cut off enough that I'm getting past the part where it's folded. So I just slice down through there, peel that away, and inside there I've got this almost tiger-like look, all of those little black spots. I can leave this rough edge for now, that's totally fine. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. The beauty of this style of working with clay, all that mottled look that I started with, I can just hold on to this piece that I just cut off and use that for my next wool feel. So on the other side now, I'm gonna cut off again just enough to get down to where there are spots. Slicing off about a quarter inch. Let's see how I did. I might not have cut off quite enough. Yep, so there I can see my little folds are still in there. I'm gonna slice off a little bit more on that side. These are skinny bodied fish, so it's okay. I've got plenty of clay to work with. There we go, I like that better. So I set those pieces aside for my next wool feel body. And now I've got my head, nice bulbous head, and this whole elongated body with all those little black spots built right in there. How fun was that? All right, uh, <clears throat> before we continue, let me just lay this on its side for a moment. And let's talk a little bit about wool what wool feels like to eat. And to transition to that, I want to show you what a wool feel skeleton looks like. This one was found on the beach just right here outside of town by some of our husbandry staff, actually, who were out on a hike. And they found this. Uh, it was basically freeze-dried on the beach, so it was nice and clean, perfectly preserved. Uh, we're not sure how it got there, but we were lucky to find it. And uh, now it's framed outside of the aquarium office here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And if you look closely at the teeth uh, in the skull, it actually looks, I mean, almost like a mammal skull, right? There's canines, there's molars in the back. These teeth are made for eating hard-shelled animals, mussels, urchins. They are able to crush the shells of those bodies, and uh, they can eat things that other animals are really not interested in eating, clams. Uh, so here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, when we feed them, we will feed them maybe pieces of clam. Uh, if you caught a, our wool field feeding a few weeks ago on Facebook Live, uh, we were feeding squid, which are easy eating for the the wool feels, but uh, they're also favorites. Um, but hunks of clam they love to eat. And uh, we don't necessarily feed them hard-bodied animals here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, but that is one of their, their natural foods out there in the wild. When we feed clams, we typically remove the shells just because it's less for us to have to clean up afterwards uh, if we don't want all those broken up shell pieces in there. Uh, but those teeth are made to be able to crush those hard-shelled prey. All right, let's get back to our document camera. 
and see how our clay is doing. All right, so we're ready to shape the body now. And so I'm going to go with uh, just more of an elongated shape. It's going to start with that abdominal section, which is going to be a little bit rounder here to start off with. And then it's going to start to get quite a bit skinnier. So if I just kind of squish my clay and start to make it into a rounder shape, starting at that point, kind of round off all the edges, but keeping it a little bit bigger right here behind the head. I'm going to stretch that out to a pretty small point. Now, at this point, it's not going to be uh, the ultimate shape of my body of my wool field, but I just want it to get to be more of a tapered, uh, elongated shape there so I can uh, continue to shape the rest of it. A little bit of a snake-like appearance here. Very cool with those spots on the sides. I love it. All right. Now, so this will be that abdominal section where it's going to have the sort of belly and right in front of that we're going to have those big pectoral fins so I've got my little paper card here I'm actually just going to kind of slice in right at the back of the head there and while the paper card is in there I'm actually going to press the clay against the card just a little bit to kind of flatten it before I peel it away this is going to help me to create those pectoral fins so I'm going to do one on each side and they are pretty round, these fins, and they come out down toward the bottom of the body. So once I've got it cut away, I'm going to use my fingers to pinch and get the, the proper shape of that pectoral fin. And they stick out pretty far. They're, oh, I like that. All right, nice rounded pectoral fin. Wonderful. And then I can smooth out the back of the head there on that side. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm starting with these fins because these are the really delicate parts and uh, there's, there's a lot too, just trying to get quite the right shape of those. And then I'll come back and smooth out the rest of those uh, body parts afterwards. So there is that fin looking head on. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Cut in, down toward the bottom of that. Press the clay against the card to get my fin nice and flat. Peel that card out of there and then start to smooth it out from the top down so it gets to be in the right place. Uh, when you're working with clay like this, it's important to try to keep things symmetrical. So look at it from different angles. Make sure your left and right side look the same. That's what symmetrical means, of course. Uh, just like us, they've got a left and a right side. And that's looking pretty good. If I look at it straight on, oh, looking at it from my underside here, I don't like quite like the look of that. That's getting there. All right, so now I've got my pectoral fins. I'm going to shape that head a little bit more. Still that kind of bullet shape. Um, as they get older, they'll have kind of a narrower top to their head, and the bottom of their face will be really fat. So they have like almost little jowls that stick out. Chubby cheeks, if you will. Uh, so I've got my head shaped just the way I like it. Now I'm ready to uh, add some eyes. And I've got my little hunk of black clay still. I'm just going to make two pretty small eyes. So what I like to do is take one little bit of black clay and then get it into a shape that I can reliably tear in, in half. So I have two eyes that are pretty darn close to the same size. So I get that, and I pinch it right in half, roll each one into a little round ball, and then I'm going to put those eyes onto my head right about in the center of the head. Uh, looking forward, but they're definitely kind of on the sides as well. So here again, I want to make sure they're symmetrical. So I'm going to look at it from different angles. I'm going to eyeball it. That's funny, pun intended. Uh, I'm going to eyeball it from the underside, from the top, from the sides. Make sure those two eyes look like they're both in the same place on opposite sides of the head. And uh, next, I want to shape the mouth. So here again, going to use my cutting tool, my little paper card. Their mouth, uh, it's not necessarily like an overbite, but they do have uh, a little bit of a, the shape of their mouth kind of point, points downward on the roof of their mouth. So I'm going to cut in at a little bit of a smile, giving it an angle like that. And then I'm going to use my fingers to get the shape of that mouth. Then I'm going to use my little round toothpick 
to get it nice and smooth. All the little angles in there, I'm just gonna roll that toothpick, toothpick to get the shape of the mouth just how I want it. Just kind of roll through all the edges and that'll smooth out anything that I made that was a little bit too sharp, too rough. Get that smoothed out. There now, from the side, we've got more of a shape to that mouth. Starting to like that. Okay. I'm going to be happy with that for now so we can finish up here. The very last thing we need to do is wrap up with those fins. So I need to preserve that abdomen right behind the head. That part is going to be the sort of belly where all those internal organs are. So I keep that nice and rounded on top the dorsal fin will start right at the back of the head, and I'm just gonna start pinching the clay a little bit at a time to lift it up and create that nice flat dorsal fin, and it's gonna go all the way down the length of the body. I'm gonna go back and forth. I want it to be as smooth as I can get it uh, as far as this top edge. And it's just a little flat fin. So they're going to have the middle of their body is actually pretty round, and this fin will stick up. So I can make that nice and sharp. Once I get it about the height that I want it, I can sharpen it. And I'm going to come all the way down to the very tail. And actually, once you get down to the tail, it's going to be a little bit easier to do both sides at once. The ventral fin, we're going to start the same way, but starting behind that abdomen part there. And start pinching, getting that bottom fin to stick out, rounding off any kind of lumpiness. And now toward the tail, I'm going to take both, end, both sides, top and bottom, and just pinch them simultaneously to get those fins to stick out above and below. And I'm going to go all the way down to a nice fine point. Now if you are using Sculpey uh, polymer clay like this, I uh, like this Sculpey clay, um, and you're planning to bake it, you might not want to go super thin because the baking process can be a little bit dicey uh, if you make it really thin. But basically, you create this fin all the way down the top and from the bottom just behind the abdomen all the way to the tip of the tail. Give it a little bit of a shape, tuck it into its den, and my goodness, your wool feel is all set to go. So. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed creating this wool feel with us uh, out of clay. And thanks again uh, for following us here on YouTube. If you subscribe to our channel, you get notifications, but we're live every day, 12 and 2 uh, p.m. Alaska time. And we'll be live in just a couple hours as well on Facebook as uh, uh, along with YouTube. So you can watch us on either platform, but give us a big thumbs up. Thanks a bunch. Submit your photos of your clay wool fields if you'd like uh, via Instagram or Facebook. We would love to see them. Thanks a bunch. Take care. Bye-bye.